Next question is from Nathaniel L. Watson. How do you turn your focus on how you feel instead of how you look? Oh. Well, there's okay, there's two ways that this will happen for you. So if you are very, very, very focused on how you look, and that's really your main driver Throw away uh, the mirror. for working out, and that's your main driver for working out, you're not going to move out of that space unless you're forced to. So what I mean by that is your health suffers. Uh, your looks suffer terribly because your health is suffering. You've got terrible digestive issues or acne or injuries. And, you know, and I've, I've talked to many people like this where they were just so focused on how they look. And at some point everything fell apart. And then they were like, you know, you, you kind of, you hit your knees and you're like, all right, I give in. I'm going to focus on my health and how I feel. Here's the other way you can do that. If you don't want to reach that point. Okay. The other way you can do that is, yeah, you could definitely change your completely shift your paradigm. Good luck with that. That's definitely the great way to do it. it takes a lot of work. Or you could do this. Uh, you could sell yourself a little bit. And this is how I'm going to sell you right now on, on why you should change this. If you focus on your looks, if that's what drives you with your workouts and nutrition, you will eventually have health consequences. When your health is poor, your looks suffer. So if you focus on your looks, the end result is you get terrible looks. If you focus on how you feel in your health, the side effect of that is looking great. And if you always focus on your health, then you will always have a greater, uh, a good deal of good health. And because again, because of that, you'll have better looks. So this is how you sell yourself. I want the best looks. I'm going to focus on how I feel because that produces the best looks. That's the secret. And again, if you don't do that, at some point, uh, you will get forced uh, to move in that direction. I think this is a, a lifelong pursuit. I really do. Uh, you know, we talk about it at, at nauseum on this podcast, and I still find myself, still to this day, being challenged in that area. I don't, I don't know if it will ever end for me, especially if it's something that is a, a deeply rooted insecurity. If it was what drove me into this space in the first place was to train because I felt like I was a skinny guy more than likely most of my fitness life i'm going to be challenged with that totally. one way or another in fact yesterday i was uh texting back and forth uh with mark bell he had reached out to me just asking me how things uh, are going. that guy really likes you <laughs> yeah he does he he's a big he's, fan he's, he's, especially send, your new mustache sends me nudes all the yeah. time i don't know what's up that thanks buddy <laughs> uh so he uh he's, he's he's texting me back and forth we're talking about fatherhood and then he asked me about my training, you know, how's, how's your training and how's, how's the gym going and stuff. I said, you know, I, I've, I've reframed my goals right now. I said, um, you know, by no means am I, uh, the in, impressive men's physique athlete right now at all. Uh, and I know that part of that process, I know I'm directly challenging my own insecurities to do that. Like, and I said to him, I said, you know, right now it's about uh, having energy to uh, when I come home to be able to play with my son, to have good rest as much as I possibly can, to be, feel mobile so that I don't get my back doesn't give out on me when I'm holding him or when I'm down low playing with him. So I've focused on those things right now. So I said on a bad week, you know, I may get one or two like strength training sessions, but uh, coupled with two or three days of mobility and tons of long walks right now that I spend with Katrina and Max. And I mean, I can't tell you how good I feel about my overall health right now and my relationship with my partner, my son, all these other aspects that I think are important when you talk about your overall health journey. But when you look at me, I don't look anywhere impressive. In fact, it's the average person that you know may have dropped in on my Instagram a couple of years ago, then drops in now, would go, "Oh my God, what's happened, Adam?" Or he's fallen off. And it's like, no, I just I've I've shifted my focus of a, a look, and it's more about other aspects of my journey. But it doesn't mean that that's not challenging. I mean, it's totally it's still something that I have, and part of me doing that is is letting go of that and challenging those versus trying to hold on to, oh my God, I used to look this way or throwing back pictures of what I used to look like on posting on Instagram to fit, make myself feel better about myself. It's like, no, instead I'm going to embrace the physique that I have right now because by no means is it bad. It's just that it's my insecurities yes. that make me think that way because it's still as healthy or healthier today than it was five years We've ago. We've just seen what that mentality does. It, you know, it, it's that it, it it ends up being that on the wagon, off the wagon 
vicious cycle that you, you tend to go through because it, it's really hard to live up to a uh, 20 year old me. You know, I just can't, I would love to go back and have that same physique and those abilities and that, you know, that, that strength and, 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 and all those, those attributes that I, I looked back fondly at, but, um, to, to be able to focus on new things. I mean, it is hard. It's something that you have to constantly just focus on one aspect of that and, and try to adopt that going mm. forward and make that become something that you do so frequently. It's just, it becomes part of, of, of your lifestyle. And I mean, it's pretty cliche to say that, but it's, it has to be that it has to be something that you incorporate into. This is what I do now forever. It's not something that, you know, I want to just hustle to get there and then back off and then hustle. And back, and then once I get there look at me, but guess what? You look at me and then what you, you go right back to old patterns and you start this whole thing all up again. So to, to be able to just incorporate one thing at a time, you know, add on to that with uh, once you once you build off of that is so much of a better strategy. Yeah, well, it's a long term strategy. Yeah, when you think when I think of uh, overall health, there there's so many things that encompass that, and there's going to be times. And 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 here's the thing too: it's I don't think that it's fair or right to to demonize wanting to look good. You know, if you want to look good and be ripped and fit. I don't think that there's some value to no, that, right? I don't think there's I don't think there's anything necessarily wrong with that. You just have to be no, careful. You celebrate it. You just have to be careful not to identify with that, right. right? Because it's only one part of the whole big picture. It's also a road to destruction if right. you're obsessed with that and that becomes your only. And you know what's funny about this is that, you know, and I, I remember learning this years ago. I went to my first like physique, you know, bikini competitor competition years ago. I had a friend that was competing in it, and he was a he was a natural bodybuilder. And I remember walking in and seeing some of these athletes in real life, and they were shredded and dieted and whatever. None of them actually in real life looked attractive. By, by the way, attractive, the, the actual real definition of the term where you where you see someone, you're like, wow, that's a, that's a magnetic individual. They all looked terribly unhealthy, they, t- bad skin. Mm-hmm. You know, It wasn't a represent. They didn't look healthy. And here's the thing. Healthy people, really healthy people, I mean, inside and out, are attractive to other healthy people. Unhealthy people are the ones that are attractive to other unhealthy people. Like you got the the roided out, you know, insecure dude who tends to attract the other the plastic surgery, extreme diet person and their their unhealthiness attracts each other. Real attractiveness comes from being truly healthy, okay? And that's a that's a good lifelong pursuit cuz I'm going to tell you something right now. I don't care who you are, you're going to get older if you're lucky. You're going to get older one day, mm-hmm. and it's all going to fall apart anyway. So either you learn the lesson now or you learn the hard lesson later on, but at some point you're going to learn this lesson. 